Hi, it's Air here. Uh, last time I talked to everybody with a little video message uh, was live and it was announcing that we were um, suspending our operations. And so it's two months later and that was a really dark moment. I know it felt really, uh, it felt very emotional and sad for me to be doing that. And I was worried about all of our staff and everybody else. Um, I, uh, I'm sure that moment will sort of stick that way in my memory for a long time and for many of you. But um, I think we have a really nice sunny day out today and, um, and we're looking forward and I have a more positive message to share today. So uh, it was two months ago, we didn't know much about all this. I, I was hoping we could duck under this big wave of COVID and come out the other side. And I think what we're seeing is that um, things have changed a lot. We're getting ready to reopen. So that's the big, the big exciting news is we're getting ready to reopen our restaurants. Clover's not going anywhere. Um, but we also are finding that we're all gonna be dealing with the results of, of COVID um, and the impact of it for quite some time to come. And I just wanted to talk a little bit about how I see that affecting Clover and more broadly folks in our business. Um, so first, first and foremost, our mission uh, from day one was, can we find a way to make vegetables really delicious, crave worthy for people who love eating meat. And that's what we've been trying to do from the very start of Clover. Um, we're trying to do that because we believe that the more people who eat meals without meat, and not necessarily people becoming vegetarians, but swapping out a meal here and there, the, um, the, the more positive impact we'll be able to have on the environment. And so that's really been the mission for Clover from day one. And we've been really successful with that. Um, Clover's annual operations, um, we, we displace um, more CO2 than uh, the, the, everybody lives in the town I grew up in, um, a, great, a great deal more than that. And so as we've been growing, we've been having more and more impact. Our mission hasn't changed, and I think it's as important as ever. Um, you know, it may not be a popular thing to say, but as we look forward, uh, we have, um, uh, if, if we march into a hotter climate and a hotter world, the impact that's gonna have on economies and people's lives is, is actually gonna be much larger than what we've seen already with the coronavirus pandemic, a matter of uh, order of magnitude larger. So uh, it's not as acute a problem, but it's, it's still important as it ever was. And of course, we wanna combine that food with really wonderful hospitality, uh, we want to provide great jobs for people and jobs they look forward to, to going to and we want to get as much money as we can to farmers that are doing wonderful things with our soil. Um, and we want to feed people meals that are nutritious and so all of those goals we have with the company are still there. They're all really important to me. I know they're important to a lot of you. And, uh, and so they're not going anywhere. Our mission's not changing in any dramatic way. Um, the food we make isn't really changing that much either. Uh, although, if anything, I think what you might find is it, it's more broad. So um, we will come back serving the meals that people have loved buying from us. Um, we'll have some different, uh, different um, uh, distribution in place with, with dealing with the COVID right now. But we're going to be serving chickpea fritter sandwiches. We're going to be serving french fries. We're going to be serving um, lavender lemonade, breakfast sandwiches. We are also um, going to be putting an effort into other areas. So we're about to launch uh, a meal program, which I'll talk a little bit more about. Uh, and uh, I'm hoping it's really successful. I'm hoping that we can help stock, stock folks' refrigerators with really delicious, nutritious food and put a little more of, um, of the takeout dollar or the grocery dollar uh, into the pockets of farmers in New England. So that's something we're really excited about. I think that um, you can expect to find Clover and CPG, uh, that's um, industry jargon, it means consumer packaged goods. So that you can find Clover in grocery stores. I don't think that's gonna happen overnight, but I do expect over the next year or so, we'll see that happening as well. Um, and I think it makes sense for a lot of reasons. It's something we've been interested in for a long time. And I think you'll also find um, Clover in, in other formats as well. Um, I've been wanting to write a cookbook for a very long time. This might be the year that we actually make that happen. I just started a at-home cooking show when I found myself stuck at home, um, and I was realizing I was getting a lot of notes from people saying, what can I do with this, what can I do with that? 
I thought it might be helpful for people to do a cooking show. So if you haven't tuned into that already, uh, I have a YouTube channel, it's called In Air's Kitchen, uh, and you can check it out. There's a bunch of episodes there, and lots of really basic, nutritious, really fun recipes. My kids have been helping me a lot with that. So I think what you'll find is the food that we've been making is still there. We're gonna expand uh, some of the avenues by which we serve people. Uh, pricing, I expect prices are going to go up. I don't know how quickly. Um, you know, what I suspect is there's gonna be a period where everybody's trying to get back to business and nobody wants to lose any customers. So we'll probably have a few months where things, it actually may be cheaper to buy food. There might be buy one, get one free deals and other kinds of discounts. Um, but I think what's going to happen is we're all going to have fewer customers uh, on the other side of this and as a result it's going to be very hard to run our businesses. We're also going to have um, a lot of inefficiencies built in. It's going to cost money to buy personal protective equipment. It's going to cost money to, um, uh, to make sure that we have the right kind of procedures in our restaurants, not just for Clover but for others. And I think all of that at some point will translate into higher cost for customers. It's also less cost efficient to sell fewer items. And if we have fewer people in our restaurants and we have fewer sales, we're, we're gonna find that we need higher prices to sustain our operations. So I'm not announcing any immediate price changes, but it's something I expect to have happen. Um, uh, suppliers, um, Clover's not gonna change uh, our supplier relationships. I mean, hopefully we'll just continue to build them. and. What I'm more concerned about there is this has been really, really hard on um, distributors as well as farmers. And there's a moment right now where CSAs are selling out, you know, which is wonderful. I'm really, really happy about that. I hope that keeps happening. But um, farmers markets are an unknown for the near future, and uh, and restaurants aren't buying like they used to. And so, you know, we're we're one of those. We bought a lot of produce, millions of dollars of produce. Um, each year from Massachusetts farmers and, and we're not doing it right now and I'm hoping we get back to that as quickly as possible but it's gonna take a little while meanwhile the farmers are in a pinch and not just the farmers but the distributors too there are some really lame national distributors that I don't care a whole lot about but I've got a big place in my heart for some of the local distributors that help us do what we do and and they're the ones that help get the items from the farm to Clover so that we can get it to you and um, and I, uh, I, I think they're gonna, it's going to be a tough time uh, for them. So I'm, I'm a little bit worried about both of those folks. We're going to do the most we can. I've been trying to direct um, Clover customers to buy from those suppliers as well as we could uh, during the shutdown period. And uh, we'll do whatever we can in the future to help strengthen those businesses. Um, and if you're an employee at Clover, you're going to be part of that. And if you're a customer of Clover, you're going to be part of that. Um, I want to talk a little bit about our employees. Uh, we, we're, if without our employees, we really aren't anything. We're like an imagined idea. And um, what makes Clover real every day uh, is, is what the employees do. And I, I think I've been having some vi virtual like Zoom interviews during the shutdown period. And the other day I had one, someone asked me, what's your um, you know, most uh, fond or touching memory um, of uh, Clover? And it was like, I was just trying to think of a good answer for that and like uh, flashing through my head were just a whole bunch of vignettes of different things that I've observed or heard of um, uh, people who work at Clover doing. And I, I can't think of anything that's made me more proud than the actions of our employees in the past. Um, and it's been, it was really painful, you know, it was, it was very painful for me to tell everybody that we had to furlough them. And um, I hope that everybody's been okay. I, mean, I, hope, I think we tried really hard to set everyone up. And as far as I know, everyone's all right right now, and I hope that's the case. Um, and I'm really looking forward to getting back to work, making sure Clover's a strong company that people can come and work with. And um, that will probably happen over time. So we're going to have to phase back our operations. And so for, for all the um, employees at Clover, um, I'll just do my best to outline that. Um, we're going to be a little bit slow compared to other restaurants I, for a bunch of reasons and part of that safety um, and uh, we're going to start doing a pantry box program like um, boxes that people can bring home. We're going to start doing that the first week of June. Now that's something that technically we could have been doing for the last couple months. I just didn't feel like we knew enough about this virus and we had everything in place to do that. So. We're going to start that up first week of June. Um, 
what that means is some employees will come back to work. There are already a couple people working with Chris right now over in the commissary. We're going to center the operations of the commissary because the commissary has a lot of overhead. And until that's running smoothly and covering its costs, it's going to be hard for us to uh, make the business work. So we're going to use those pantry boxes to get that part of the business running. Uh, then we're going to sequence in the restaurants. And the first restaurant we plan to open will be the, the hub, the restaurant right there at the commissary. And then we'll add other restaurants after that. Um, I, I don't know exactly what the schedule will look like, but I expect that Burlington will be one of the earlier restaurants to open um, and uh, because I think the suburbs will come back more quickly. Uh, and we'll figure out the others. And I think when we open up initially, it'll be curbside only, so people won't be coming in and sitting in the restaurants, but we'll be having people come and pick up their food, so digital only orders. Um, and then we'll sequence through and open the rest of the restaurants. And I'm hoping that by the end of the summer and into September, we have all the restaurants open and operating. But it's a long time before we get to a place where we have the same daily sales that we had three months ago or four months ago. And I think everybody just needs to be prepared for that. Um, we'll stay in touch with everybody as we're getting things back online. And as I said, we might be building up some new business lines with these pantry boxes and with um, other kind of items like selling things to grocery stores. So uh, there might be opportunities for, for employees in those areas as well. Um, uh, I thought I'd talk a little bit about our real estate. Um, this is a, a big one. Um, I can just say very, very clearly, if Clover has to pay the same rents um, that we've been paying in the past over the coming months, it just won't work. Uh, you know, I can't figure out how to make this business work with the level of sales that we're expecting. Um, we just can't afford the rents that are currently in place. And it's not just Clover, it's all the restaurants. You can't take a restaurant and drop the sales by 40% or 50% and still cover rent. And so we're all facing that problem. I, what I'm hoping we can do is come to uh, agreements with our landlords. I think what we really need to do is move to some sort of a percentage rent where we're paying the same percent of sales that we used to pay previously, but that the amount of rent each month scales with our business because uh, we may have um, some resurgence of COVID and we may have, uh, you know, we may be improving our sales and we may see them drop a little bit again. So I think that's an important thing for the business. I hope other restaurateurs are looking at that way as well. I think just trying to trudge forward and imagine the world that we used to be in um, is going to be our future, I think is a, is a recipe for disaster. So I think we really have to just adjust and adapt our expectations. Um, and, uh, and I'm, I'm a little worried, like I'm sure a lot of you are, that some of my favorite restaurants might um, not be able to make it through all this. I, I hope that's not the case. Um, for fellow restaurateurs out there, a, a number of you I've been in touch with, but um, if there's anything that we can do, you know, advice we can give or any uh, other help we can offer, let us know. Um, I know it's part of what makes my day exciting is um, food, and not just the food that we make at Clover, but I really love the food that others make too. So. I'm rooting for um, uh, for the other restaurants that I love in the Boston area and in other cities. Um, everybody's going to have very tough times ahead. And for customers, I think the quick thing I would say is, um, you know, try it when you when be patient with us and, and everybody else too. Uh, you know, when you come into a Clover for the first time in a while, um, the staff in there are going to be doing things that I didn't ask them to do before. You know, new things that they've had to learn how to do and. We're all gonna to need to learn how to make that work. So I think the biggest thing that can be helpful there is patience. And of course, um, coming back as those opportunities present themselves, I mean, we are gonna rely on that. And uh, our success is gonna be based on how well we find people coming back and returning to us. Um, and, uh, uh, and then the last thing I'll just talk a little bit about is safety procedures. Um, you know, this is evolving for us. I really would have liked to have no operation until a point in time where I could test every one of my employees. And I'd even like to test regularly. Um, we're not able to do that right now. Uh, the, the state of Massachusetts, I can't get access to tests for people who, you know, right now you have to have had contact or have symptoms. And so I can't get people tested who are outside of those two groups. Um, but we are going to try to move toward that goal over time. And I'm hoping by the time the restaurants are opening, we have much better testing uh, regimens in place. Um, I think that, that having solid testing is a part of gaining confidence for people coming to work as well as, as people coming to eat with us. Uh, 
in terms of um, using our indoor restaurants, we're just not going to do it in the near term. Um, we'll open them up at some point when we feel like that makes sense, but initial operations are going to be um, uh, digital only. So you can pick up, we'll do curbside pickup and we'll do um, other kinds of uh, uh, takeout, but we're just not going to do in-store for a little while. Um, we're obviously going to um, follow all the guidance around personal protective equipment and spend time with our staff and make sure we take people's temperatures at the start of work and, uh, and we're going to take those precautions. And um, we're going to make sure we have the procedures in place so that these things don't get lax over time. I think that's something I'm a little concerned about is as people get used to stuff, um, letting our guard down too much. So we'll make sure that um, we feel safe for our employees and we feel safe for our customers. And um, uh, uh, you know, one more thing I didn't, I didn't talk about that's probably um, having a big impact on the restaurant industry right now is delivery. So a lot of these delivery companies, I mean, you guys may not know this, um, and my employees, customers, suppliers, may, maybe that none of you know this, but a lot of those delivery companies ask for 30 or 35% of the order. Um, it's crazy. I think we're going to have to use delivery. I think we're going to have to open it up more broadly to like a bunch of delivery companies. Uh, but what we might do is charge more for the items that are being delivered. Um, the alternative is trying to do self-delivery, which I think would be hard to pull off. But um, I know that if you take Clover and you take out 30% of every sale, it's really hard to make the business work. So, And that's not just true for Clover. That's true for all other restaurant companies. So in the meantime, well, we're figuring it all out. Um, I'd encourage you, if you're ordering from a restaurant you really love, um, show them that love by calling them directly, ordering directly from their uh, website, trying to help them avoid some of those delivery fees because um, they're really onerous right now. Um, and uh, I think that's about all I have to update you guys on. Um, we're getting started as soon as we can. Um, thanks everybody for being there. I've seen a lot of people tuning into the, um, the, the YouTube show In Air's Kitchen. I've had happy hours with some of you, um, which has been a lot of fun. And uh, I can't wait to see everybody in person sometime soon.